What up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dustin's Fish Tanks. It's Friday, it's good Friday, it's a fired up Friday. I am so jacked to be doing this video. Some of the people that are on the Facebook fan page, Dustin's Fish Tanks on Facebook, check it out. Got a little sneak peek of what's happening here. I did a video on this in November. This was got what we, this, excuse me, I can't even talk, I'm so excited. Uh, this is a little aquaponics setup that one of my friends did. And I swear, I'm like her brother from another mother. This is my girl, Rebecca Self, foodchainlex.org, aquaponics. I couldn't even contain myself. I came in here. Big systems and effects, sister. What's up? Are you excited? I'm so jacked for you. I came in here the other day. I saw you at, we were, I was getting coffee somewhere or whatever, and I saw you, and I was like, how's the setup? And you're like, dude, it's up. So, it's up. It's up. Good Lord, help us. 8,000 gallons, like, induction lighting, aquaponics in the mix. Living the dream. Like, I'm so excited for you, Rebecca. What's up? How the heck are you doing today? Yeah, I'm busy. Spectacular day. Spectacular day. I, I have nothing to complain about. The system is rocking. It's doing its thing. We are, we are pumped. We are rolling. We are going to talk about three things today, folks. We're going to talk about the water. We're going to talk about the lights. And we're going to talk about the fish. Um, first and foremost, I forced her to take the covers off over here because I was like, you got to see this water. Because when, when last time I walked in here, we all four were open. She's got them covered up because there's no plans to take up the excess light and blah, 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 blah. So let's talk about it. Let's peel this sucker back. 8,000 gallon aquaponics system in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm fired up about it. What do we got going on here water wise? Okay, so the water is a recirculating system. Okay. So all of that 8,000 gallons of water is constantly cycling through the whole. Okay. Um, so that water is what connects our fish and our plants together. Okay. Um, they're not physically connected. It's the water that brings them together. So it's the water that moves the waste from the fish over to the plants to feed them. It's that water that goes through the bacteria in order for that ammonia to be converted into nitrate so that it's available for the plants. Um, it's that water that we're pumping oxygen into so that we have a DO that's high enough to support the plants, the fish, and the bacteria. Okay. Okay. And how many gallons do you think you have in each one of these? How big? How big are these? These are 40 feet long. These beds are four foot by 40 feet long. So there's roughly about a thousand gallons of water oh, um, in these beds. That's so sweet. One. So it's a. This is the vast majority of the water um, in this system. It's all in these beds. All right. Um, let's talk about the construction of these, because I, you know, I talk about doing it in the greenhouse. Yep. So what, what we're doing here? How, how are these constructed? So this what? we actually copied um, some other people around the country that have had success in building grow beds like this. We like these because they are totally modular. So this isn't a special order thing. These are all built here on site with really basic materials. So just plain old lumber. We actually marine grade painted them so that they would didn't we didn't want to use pressure treated water uh, or pressure treated wood, but we wanted gotcha. them to be sealed. Um, so we've got uh, just standard lumber, and then all of this interior sides of these beds are lined with insulation, rigid insulation. Okay. Right? So you can see it kind of on the outside. Um, you can see the the, wall, the other side of that rigid insulation. Um, it's just the pink stuff, the oh, two-inch foam. Gotcha. Yep. And same thing on the floor because our water, our beds actually sit directly on the floor, so we have a, a thin layer of foam on the bottom to keep that water insulated. Oh, um, good call. Because we're cause... keeping this water warm. All right. And what temperature are you running this water? We want so the work. We're, we're heating the environment, not the water. But the ah, goal is right, that we want right. to have 74 degree water for our fish. Wow. Warm. Wow. Warm. Okay. So. Um, and then the final piece on these beds is this liner. That's the sort of secret sauce. The secret sauce. And, yes. And what, what kind of liner so is it's it? It's Durascrim. It's an organic grade plastic liner. Uh, it's real rigid, and it is um, it is able to sustain all the weight in these systems. Um, but it also doesn't puncture very easily. Okay. So Because we're moving things in and out. Right, right, right. And that's, so it doesn't puncture very easily. Is there any reason it's white, or is that just because that's how it comes? Yeah, I think it, I don't think we have a particular preference. It's ideally never really going to see any kind of light. Right. right? Because it's going to be covered with the foam, um, with the plants are going to be sitting in, so the light is sort of shielded from that, wow. that water. Because we don't right. want any algae right. growing in here. Right, right. So no algae. All right, so we've got this part of the water. Let's talk about these lights, because I think this is pretty cool. Induction lighting, right? Now, you went and you looked at a couple different things, got some advice. What, give us the skinny. Absolutely. So we, because we are indoors, we knew from the very beginning 
that the biggest challenge for us was going to be our lighting for these plants. Um, we want it to be energy efficient. That's what we're trying to show is that how cleanly you can do these systems. So we didn't want to do just a traditional metal halide or one of these big grow lights. It just gives off a huge amount of heat in the process. electromagnetic energy to excite the gas as opposed to an electrode. Okay. So you have minimal heat loss coming out of these guys. You can put your hand under here or above here compared to any other kind of output light. Um, these put off the same amount of full spectrum as a 400 watt metal halide, but they use only two, the electrical equivalent of a 200. Wow. So they're amazingly energy efficient. What um, spectrum? Full spectrum. Full spectrum. Full spectrum. Um, and then the other awesome thing about induction lights is that the bulb lasts for 10 years. Um, I, so I kind of want to call bullshit on that, but that's what I was, I no, 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 no. I asked you about that last time, though, and you said that the, 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 the spectrum might wear down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's, it's yeah. a warranty. Yeah. I got to so, talk with these people. That's, so a, that's no, awesome. No joke. Indigro is the manufacturer of wow. these lights. Here comes they, the plug. Bring I, it. I no. am going to give it. them the plug. plug it. Number one, I'm going to give them the plug because they gave us a they heck of a deal. They hooked it up. That's awesome. And they and they have been shown to work in other indoor aquaponics systems. Go around here and give them the full plug yeah. on the top there. Um, yeah, yeah, they hooked you up. They totally hooked us up. We've got 21 of their lights wow. in there. Um, so it's a massive amount of light that they're that they're hooking us up with. Um, but they they've got a great product. They, they got a good product. Um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, when the I, I think it's exciting for if, if yeah. 10 years because you know people talk about LEDs and everything. Did yeah. you even look at LEDs? Did you even? Did we they, did. We looked at LEDs. Um, there's a lot of concern about the ballasts in yeah. LEDs. They're mostly manufactured in China. Uh -huh. um, Okay. Right, so they're not, from a material standpoint, they're not very sustainable for the gotcha. long-term life of the system. So cool, so cool. So we got the water. Yeah. We but got the light. Can we talk about the moving? Oh, lights? of course. What am I saying here? Yeah. So yeah, I we're think moving, the most moving. amazing thing about oh, it, right. the most amazing thing about these lighting systems is the fact that they are on a big, giant mover. Right. So Indigo totally hooked us up on the light fixtures themselves. But those light fixtures have a coverage of four foot by four foot. Well, I already said these beds are 40 feet long. That means we would need 10 lights per bed, which is a heck of a lot of investment in lights. 10 lights per bed. 10 lights per bed. So in order to cut our costs in half, we knew that if we put these lights on a system that moved, we actually would get two benefits. Number one, we could buy half the lights rather than 10, we could go to five per bed. But the other challenge of indoor light production is that you're doing static light. So in the center part of that light, you get real intense light, and on the edge, you get shadowy light. I'm feeling right? it. So those plants are stretching to get the light. Ah. So by moving these lights, what we're basically replicating is a cloudy day, which ah. is the ideal circumstance for that. growing plants. I love it. I love it. So, um, yeah, our contractor totally hooked totally us up on this light it. moving system. He MacGyvered this on the back of a cocktail napkin at a bar. Sometimes that's the way you got to do it, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. So the whole system is all powered by one motor, and that motor then is on a variable um, uh, adjuster so that we can change the speed because there's not a whole lot of research out there about how fast uh -huh. to move the lights. So we have the opportunity at least to play around with what gives the optimal growth rate, what, wow. what speed of those lights gives an optimal growth rate. So, so, so cool. How much pot are you going to grow in it? Uh, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No Everybody idea. puts that in the comments, so I figured I'd just feed I'm their thing. You, when I had the greenhouse up, people were like, oh, here it comes. So I had the to. field of indoor aquaponics <laughs> owes a great debt to the indoor pot growing industry because <laughs> the lighting technology, there's no question, has been forced forward because of that. Really? Yeah. The problem is, is that we're growing lettuces and color.
Yeah, that's here. not a problem. It's a good thing what you're it, doing here. Let's yeah. show some of this Price here. Price point is a little harder. Well, yeah. we'll worry about yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Um, what do we got going on over here? So these are our little ceilings in their very, very infantile stage that will soon be moving into the system once it's cycled. Um, we've got lettuces growing, all different varieties of lettuces. There's some basil that's planting over there. And this tray actually is a tray of microgreens. Um, so one of the, the new crops that we're really well suited for doing is um, microgreens. And that is basically the baby, baby stages of a plant. These are only five days old. These are pea shoots. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll wow. grow them for about 14 days. That's five days ago? Five days old. Man. Five days old. And then we'll harvest them right above the seeds. So what you're getting is the most nutritionally dense that plant will ever be. Wow. So it's chock full of nutrition. You can eat hundreds of varieties of different plants in their microgreen phase. So broccoli, peas, cabbage. Um, That's so beets, cool. All kinds of things. So you can have all salad. Very cool. I did not know how that was. That's five days of growth. That's five days impressive. of growth. Yeah, they planted on Monday. So we're going to Friday. We're going to come. That's that's pretty sweet. So yeah. these lights are all right. So these lights are doing their thing. Their then, lights huh? are doing their thing. Exactly. All right. Well, let's let's exactly. come over here to why it's a big day. Okay. I made them capture one. Alexis, say what's up. Fish hey. Tank TV. <laughs> She's a fan of the channel. What's your story? Tell us what happened. What? How'd you get involved with this? Aqua, with this? I got involved because I saw all these videos. <laughs> I think it's so cool. She helps out. You help her out around here at Transy. And Mims has, this is what came today, folks. Talk about the tilapia, what the deal is. You got like a certain, it can only be males or something. Yeah. The... So these are all males, yeah. All male tilapia, super fast growing, won't reproduce in the system. And so in a couple months, hopefully we'll have a, a, a harvestable crop. Fish sandwich. How, uh, Fish. And this thing goes underwater and we're totally going underwater. Uh, how, uh, I guess, how big do they get? How, like, why are there only males? Tell us about, like, the fish part of it. Pull, you mind pulling that air stone out so I can get a little... Yeah. You got 65 fish in here, all right? 65, Six, six. yes. All right, so they're all in here. Why are they all males? Males grow faster. Males grow faster? Females, yeah. Okay. Yep. Plus, since it's a recirculating system, since the water for the fish is shared to the plants, uh, we don't want them reproducing, having little baby fish that'll get in through ah. to everything and then just start eating our uh, eating Could our mess plants. up your, okay. Sure. So you want to keep the plants and the fish separate. So you want to keep them separate. So what are you going to do when you harvest the fish, you get more? Are you guys going to do some breeding on here? What's the plan Eventually, there? Eventually, that's the plan is to do some do some breeding here we can get a breeding uh stock uh and then keep a Put separate camera bim's your farm manager bim's right farm manager. yeah dude he's, he's, the, he's the maestro uh, so eventually we'll uh um, you know it'll be a while before we actually have to replace our, our tanks take this so. running it at what 70 something trying, right, to, get trying, it, trying know, to get trying around to get around up there right now it's it's right around Right around 70, and that's that's happy for them. That's They'd happy. Like it a little bit warmer, but and growth rates are faster, higher temps. That's right. right. Okay. That's right. They're a tropical freshwater fish. Right. And I'm so gonna stand on this bucket here and just show the scope of what's going on. So, how many gallons are these big boys? 250. Wow. Wow. 250 times what? Four of them? Six. Six. So there's six. So oh, excuse me. They yeah. take about six months to grow out. I'm with that. And the cool thing about the staggered system is it means overall the nutritional value going in stays constant. Uh -huh. right? And that means there's a constant supply of food for our plants. I'm with so we don't you. have very little nutrition to start off and then a huge amount at the end. Right. It that makes all sense. Stays relatively constant. All right. And then how was who designed this? Your, your uh, engineer on the back of a napkin here or who? No. from a different mother again totally. he's totally God, he's doing this guy is doing i just spoke to him for like two minutes you can imagine how cool the conversation when he's actually doing his graduate work on testing different lighting on aquaponics he, so he's testing leds halides t5s all that good stuff so there's a whole nother outside the scope of this video thing yeah. going on we gotta talk to him so he helped design this he did it in the virgin islands for 14 years get out of yeah, here he um so what's going on here though so this is part of our filtration system so one of the challenges with aquaponics 
Right. And the solids we don't actually want in getting in through our piping. Okay. Right? Because it's going to clog things up. So these taller tanks here are what's called clarifiers. They're mechanically taking out the big solids because there's a baffle in those those. You say clarifiers. mechanically taking it out. Like there's just a big baffle. Yeah. There's a baffle. Can I see it's, that? Yeah. yeah. All right. There's a big sheet of PVC going down the center in here. Ah. Okay, I think so. Okay. All right, I got you. You see one side of that baffle has water that's coming in from the back. Right. And then this and water, that's the out, clean. that's the in. Okay. So it's forcing that water to slow down and go underneath the back. Gotcha. So slower water can't carry as much. So those heavier solids fall to the bottom of these conical tanks. And then I'm we can just it. open a valve and take out the solids from the bottom. And clear water then goes on. So what do you do with the solid waste from the bottom? So we're going on this far. I have no so, doubt anything that goes. So, um, and then wow. these are a couple of different things. There's a fine solid filtration. So any fine solids that make it through those clarifiers will settle in here. But all these scrubbies in here are actually uh, trying to be good homes for the bacteria. Right. right. So they've got tons of surface area on these. They're already food grade. Um, but they'll get inhabited by right, billions right, right. and billions of bacteria. And those are the bacteria that, that keep this system running. Wow. Because right? it's the bacteria that are actually going to convert that ammonia from the fish into nitrate for the plants. Very, very, very cool. So pumped. Yeah. All right, so we screwed it up last video. Where can people go to check out more of this? Give okay. the whole deal. So foodchainlex.org is the website. And we're always doing updates on Facebook. So Facebook is at Food Chain Lex. Um, check it out. Like us. Follow along. Come out here. Check it out. Lend a hand. Totally. Totally. Wow. And we're a nonprofit, so we'll, uh, we're taking whatever help we can That's get. That's right. Help her out. This is so sweet. We're volunteer. Oh, it's so cool. Like, made my day. I, I had, like, a well, Waffle House uh, food coma the other day, and I was left. After I saw it, I was like, I got to go see what Rebecca's up to, and I planned this video. So that's your Friday update, folks. Later. Awesome.